ingest cards. Which one should you buy? Which ones are good? Which ones should you avoid? I've got with me a couple of well-known ingest cards. Today I got the AJA, the Avermedia Extreme Cap SDI. Oh. I have got a Bluetech HDMI to USB 3.0. And I have got a Mux Lab. Let's see if you could see that. A Mux Lab HDMI to USB 3.0 for capturing and streaming. So I have four different devices here. Uh, two of them are SDI and two of them are HDI. And we're going to go ahead and test them and see which of them is worth your money. Now, I've been a big fan of vMix for a long time huge fan of vMix. Um, I went ahead and invested in it during the pandemic and actually did quite a bit of work. At one point, we were doing about five different programs through vMix a week, and it's been great. No issues. Um, it's been really wonderful. And one of the things is, so I have a machine built, custom-built machine for vMix. I have some Blackmagic ingest cards so that I can come in over SDI or HDMI, so I can deal with cameras, laptops, whatever the case may be, broadcast equipment. I can bring everything in and run it through vMix. And it's very simple. You know, you just add the input, boom. vMix also uses NDI. I'm a big fan of NDI for the one cable solution. In fact, my overhead camera is NDI. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about physical ingest cards and what do you need. So the whole thing with vMix was sometimes it's not easy to take my whole desktop with me. Sometimes we need something smaller like a laptop. But now it's harder to get inputs into the laptop. If you're doing smaller events, maybe two or three cameras, a laptop's going to work well or even a mini PC. And how do I get the inputs in? Um, if you don't have full-size cards that you can use the Blackmagic card, you have these options. Let's not talk about Thunderbolt. That's a whole other issue. Let's talk about HDMI 3.0. So these four devices I have all support HDMI 3.0. And we're going to see how easy it is to set one up. I'm going to go ahead and get my camera connected. And we're going to start with the Bluetech. Plug it right into my camera. So now in vMix, vMix is really simple. They have great tutorials online. All you need to do for your first input, click on Add Input. Go to Camera, because this is considered a camera. So what we're looking for is the USB video device. All right. The frame rate, oh, I wish I could just choose Auto but I believe it is 30p. We can pull audio from it. Video format is default. It has a couple of different options, but we always use default. Say OK. Boom. There's the camera. So we have the camera coming in. So now we're going to go ahead and test out the Mux Lab. USB 3. Now the downside with this model is it comes with a power cord. Um, that is not as useful. It makes it a bit harder to get set up in certain areas. It does allow for USB mini as well at a 5 volt input. So 5 volt 1 amp input then you may not need to carry around the power brick. But we're going we're gonna to use what it came with. All right, so now I have the Mux Lab Pro Digital, the HDMI to USB 3 video capture and streaming card. Um, it's connected already. So let's go back to vMix and see what this card shows up as. Add input, camera. Hmm. Still shows up as USB video device. We'll once again turn it to 30p. We'll say OK. 
Well, now that's a strange error. If we zoom in, we'll see that it only do 1080 720p. That's not great. Let's try that. But I'm not seeing the camera. I'm not seeing the camera. Let me make sure everything is working well. USB 3N, 720. So I'm not sure what's going on. Let me check one thing. All right, the camera's still working. The camera's still working, uh, but this capture card is not. And if you see here specifically, it says it can do up to 4K 60. So far it can't, so let's just put this one to the side. It has a few dings against it already. So moving on, we're gonna go to the Avermedia. You can't even see the boxes so bright. This is the Avermedia, really tiny box. It comes with a Mini 2 full-size BNC. It comes with a USB 3 and USB-C cable. That's So this is actually a USB-C input. So this is our full overhead shot. You can see I'm plugged in by the really mini to the BNC to my SDI cable, my USB-C output to the laptop, and boom, shows up just fine. No fuss, no muss, very easy. So last but not least, I have the AJA UTAP. Very, very popular um, device. In fact, this was the first capture card I got um, for a program I was doing. Uh, because I had many more SDI cameras at the time. All right, so I have it connected. Once again, I can't give you the overhead shot just yet. So let's go ahead and add it. Add input, camera. Now this shows up as a UTVID, so that's the UTAP. We're gonna do same settings as before. Ta-da! Very easy to use, very easy to set up. One box, one device, a couple of clicks, and boom, you're in. So as we can see, out of the four I have, the Blue Tech worked immediately. The Extreme Cap from Avermedia worked just fine, no issue. The AJA UTAP worked fine. And unfortunately, the Mux Lab did not work. First of all, it only accepted a uh, 720 output to vMix, and uh, it didn't work at all. So in fact, on another vMix system I tried, it said it would only accept a 1280 by 540 um, image and there's no way to manually put that into vmix so i couldn't get anything going so i'll be sending that one back i do have another device that should be delivered soon and it is the atomos connect 2 4k all right so i did get the atomos connect in the mail it's right here it's a pretty tiny device all things considered it's uh, just the hdmi input USB 3 output. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this using my USB 3 extension cord, connect this right into the laptop, and then connect my HDMI cable. Then we'll go right back into vMix, add our input, which once again is the USB video. It automatically jumps to NTSC 30p, Bam. And you automatically see that the camera has come in. It's just that simple and straightforward. So as you can see with our USB 3 capture cards, we see what works with vMix and what doesn't, what works very easily. Um, and we get the idea that these devices should really just be plug and play. 
Now, there are a couple of USB 3.0 devices we weren't able to test out. Um, this isn't a sponsored video. I buy all these products myself for my own use, uh, so we can only get so many. We tested the AJA. We tested the Atomos Connect. We tested the Avermedia. And we tested MuxLab, as well as Bluetech. All of these can be easily found on your favorite AV shopping site. And we thank you for watching. Hopefully you've gained something from this video. One thing I would really like to see is how many USB 3.0 input devices can I use at the same time? My laptop has three USB inputs. Can I use them? Could I use a USB hub to add USB 3.0 devices? And how many can I run without there being a real problem? So come back for that episode. Um, thanks again. This is Robert with Space Age Consulting. Here, here's hoping you see me soon.